Mega Alarm residents are still wondering where all that noise came from this weekend. It was loud enough to shake some houses and scare residents' pets. 22 News spoke with the Agawam Police Department and the Fire Department, who said they were sent out to look into what the cause was, but never found anything. We thought there might have been an accident on the street, but I came outside, couldn't see anything, but there was a loud explosion. It seemed like it came from Connecticut down in Suffield. One Suffield police dispatcher told 22 News that her entire house was shaken by the noise, and she is still left wondering what it was. A small earthquake early this morning in an unusual place, Oahu. And it comes just days after a series of quakes jolted the state. What's unusual is that these are earthquakes that are occurring in places where we tend not to get a lot of earthquakes. I found out from experts that it's rare to have earthquakes on Oahu, Maui, or Kauai. Up to 20 earthquakes have shaken Arizona in the last week and a half. Even though there were no reports of damage or injuries, this phenomenon is catching some experts' attention. Now your side's Alex Liaco explains the recent swarm of earthquakes. They may not look like this or cause damage like this. But as this map shows, northwest Arizona has been hit by nearly 20 earthquakes, ranging from magnitude 0.7 to magnitude 2.6. This all started March 29th when a 2.3 quake happened just outside of Littlefield. It's unusual for us to see that many earthquakes and continuing over a period like that. That makes about 22 events in that part of our state since late March. A strong earthquake shook Myanmar. It had a magnitude of 7.0. No reports of casualties or major damage. At least six people died in Pakistan last week. The earthquake struck Myanmar on Wednesday night, causing tremors in countries throughout the region. And the earthquake hit some 400 kilometers northwest of Myanmar's capital, Naypyi Taw, around 8 p.m. local time. I was working inside my office when the earthquake struck. Everybody inside ran out of the building. These frequent earthquakes can prove to be very dangerous. This weekend, Japan is recovering from not one, but two major earthquakes, both centered near the southern island of Kyushu. This is the moment the second quake struck. The terrifying roar of back-to-back -back earthquakes barely 24 hours apart. Sometimes the pictures tell the entire story. This is the scene in southern Japan right now. Roads ripped apart, buildings turned to rubble, flattened like pancakes. Entire neighborhoods, in fact, askew after a series of powerful quakes. The 7.0 quake hit in the middle of the night when people were sleeping. Japanese TV shows buildings that are shattered now or even collapsed. Some are on fire. The rubble in the streets make it difficult for rescue teams to get to victims. Crews urgently searching for survivors and the injured going door to door in the dark. Mother Nature seemingly rising up against southern Japan. A cluster of aftershocks, a man's camera rolling as one hits. Those windows shaking and people screaming, sending thousands into the streets. And this is the hardest hit town in the entirety of southern Japan. House after house turned into mounds of debris. And worst news for Japanese, there have been 450 aftershocks here. And just one day after the two quakes in Japan, the third hits Ecuador. As we just mentioned, both zones are along the so-called Ring of Fire. A very powerful 7.8 earthquake shook large portions of Ecuador yesterday. Nearly 80 are reported dead. Today's quake hit along Ecuador's coastline just before 2 p.m. 
Another earthquake to report this morning. The 6.1 magnitude quake shook the Pacific island of Tonga. This happened around 7.30 at night, their time, just after midnight our time. And then last night in Ecuador. Now this morning we are seeing more images of damage in Ecuador after that magnitude 7.8 earthquake. <laughs> More video coming out of there with showing what happened when that quake rocked the coastal town of Muesne last night, close to 7 o'clock local time there. The quake flattened homes and buckled highways. Since the quake hit, there have been dozens of aftershocks. Ecuador's president has issued a national emergency. On the deck, below the bridge wing. Well, it's being called one of Russia's most aggressive military moves in recent memory. Russian fighter jets flying low and close to a U.S. naval destroyer. And take a look at this map behind me here. You see this area right around the Balkans. The fighter jets swooping in extremely close right in this area. American sailors got the intimidating air show in the Baltic Sea yesterday as Russian pilots made several simulated attacks on their ship. Like you may come across the uh, flight deck coming in low, bridge wing level. Below the bridge wing. Below the bridge wing. Navy officials called the maneuvers extremely aggressive and warned of escalating tensions between the U.S. and Russia. We was unable to find her owners. Um, had she been microchips at the time, we might have been able to reunite with her original owners. She's microchipped now, though. She is microchipped now. So when they come to dogs, trust we microchip all our dogs. Right, and this is the problem, isn't it? I mean, let's talk to David about this. Um, many people thinking, well, why should I? I haven't done it for so long. It costs what, 20, 30 pounds. Why? Why do I need to bother about this? In 10 days' time, it's going to be the law to, to do it. But more importantly, what, what microchipping will do is will be to actually get the dog back to the, to the owner if, if the dog uh, goes stray or, uh, or inadvertently gets lost. And I think that's really important because it gives peace of mind to the dog owner that they can find their dog again. Well, what, what will happen if you don't do this? I mean, yes, you can face a fine, but how are you going to track people who haven't microchipped their dogs? What, what, are they going to be people on the street trying to trace microchips in dogs? Yes, I mean, as you, as you know, we have dog wardens who are out uh, in every local authority looking, uh, looking for stray dogs. It's their job to pick them up. From the 6th of April 2016, it will be a legal requirement that all dogs are microchipped and the details of the keeper are registered and kept up to date on an approved microchip database. Now, the law changes on Wednesday the 6th of April, meaning that dogs must be microchipped or pet owners could face a fine of up to 500 quid. I'd like to speak, um, Madam President, on an amendment that I have submitted that will ensure the implementation of what is already required by statute, a biometric exit system from the for the United States. Law has required a biometric, that means a fingerprint, not as opposed to biographic, which is name and birth date, a biographic uh, system that allows us to know who comes in this country on a visa and whether or not they left when they were supposed to leave. It's absolutely critical to the safety of the United States. It's something the 9-11 Commission in 2001, 2002 recommended as a high priority. Former Democratic Senator Bob Graham is among those urging the Obama administration to declassify 28 pages of a congressional report on the September 11th attacks. Graham, who co-authored the report in 2003, spoke about those top secret pages in an interview with Steve Croft for 60 Minutes. So this is your office? Bob Graham won't discuss the classified information in the 28 pages. He will say only that they outline a network of people that he believes supported the hijackers while they were in the U.S. Did you happen to ask the FBI director why it was classified? 
we did in a general way, and the answer was because we said so and it needs to be classified. Right now, when you come into the United States, you're able to put your hand on a screen, they clock you in biometrically, biographically, and uh, biometrically, and then when you leave, there's no system that clocks you out. This is done all over America. So picture this. You get into your car and the steering wheel reads your fingerprints to determine it's really you before you start the car. It's called biometrics. Biometric systems evaluate faces, fingerprints, voice, and even mannerisms and how we walk. The applications for homeland security are tremendous. As more and more surveillance cameras are on watch all over the world, all the identifying information can be sensed and identities revealed and instantly linked to databases safer and more secure. That's the world we are helping to create. That's the world we will have in the future. Storms are rolling again through Texas. Tonight, they are hoping it is not the hail. The hail looked like torpedoes being shot into this backyard pool in Wiley, Texas. Meteorologist Tom Bradshaw. This is really, really unusual. As more than 10,000 people lost power. Why? Why is this happening? Why? It's just incredible. I've never been through anything like this before. Here in Wiley, you could hear the glass shattering as massive hailstones pierced through the windows of this home. Tons of dead sardines clogged the Kerile River in southern Chile. Authorities have started cleaning up, but why the fish died is still a mystery. new information on the Indiana State Trooper that we told you about on Good Morning Tri-State who was fired for promoting religious beliefs during traffic stop. I work for the state, but all, ultimately I'm a soldier for Jesus Christ. Amen. God has Amen. used that job Amen. in the last three years, what it was supposed to be met for, and that was to spread the word, to tell people when they're hurting the truth. Government programs cannot touch anybody. It's the word of God that can change Amen. people. 